The next Brawl Stars update is happening. We got some sneak peeks that were not covered in Brawl Talk. Chromatic Brawler costs are decreasing. We got bling instead of star points, which I'm going to explain all the conversion rates. We'll talk about who it's good for, who it's not good for. Balance changes, quality of life improvements, and gem and bling costs for all the new skins. Starting off, we've got a new epic gear called Pet Power. The Pet Power gear is the newest epic gear that will only be available for Jesse, Nita, Mr. P, Penny, and Tara. It increases the damage of each of their pets by 20%. So this increases the damage of Nita's bear, Jesse's turret, Mr. P's porter, Penny's cannon, and the clone from Terra's black portal star power will also get a damage buff as well as the clones from her gadget. Also, if you have her healing shade star power, the amount that it heals will be increased instead of it dealing damage. Amber is also getting a new mythic gear, which is the sticky oil gear, and that makes her the first baller to have both an epic gear and a mythic gear. With her sticky oil gear equipped, her oil spills will actually slow enemies down by 20%. Now, whether the oil is from her super or her gadget, it doesn't matter. As long as the enemy is walking on it, they will lose a fifth of their movement speed until they get off of it or until she burns it up. And honestly, this gear seems a little bit strong to me because any amount of slowing from a brawler just, it puts them in a major disadvantage. And the only person that can get rid of it is Amber. And if she just puts it down either with her super or not even her super, she can just do it with a gadget, then guess what? It's stuck there until she actually lights it on fire. Eve is also getting a mythic gear called quadruplets. And she also has an epic gear and a mythic gear, which is pretty cool. Now her quadruplets mythic gear adds an extra hatchling to all of Eve's abilities. So instead of spawning three hatchlings with her super, it will spawn four and then will obviously block, you know, some more damage for Eve and her teammates. But I could also see it being useful for her second gadget since that honestly hasn't been used much since it was released. Okay, now we got to talk about bling. There's a lot to talk about that wasn't covered in Brawl Talk. Star points are being removed from the game and they are being replaced with bling. You will get one bling for every 10 star points that you owned before this update. And all the skins that used to cost star points in the game are now going to be purchasable with bling or gems. Now, a lot of things are getting rebalanced and reworked, so pay close attention to this next part because you might want to spend your star points before this update lands. So as soon as you're done watching this video, and here is why. Pretty much all of the star point skins are actually having their costs increased. Let's take an example, Outlaw Colt. 500 star points. That would be 50 bling. And after the update, he's going to cost 1,000 bling. The cheapest skins after the update are going to be 1,000 bling, unless they randomly do a, a discount or something like that, which they haven't mentioned being able to even do in the first place. Also, all of the Power League skins are having their costs from, you know, 25,000 star points or the equivalent of 2,500 bling are going up to 5,000 bling so that they're in line with the other epic skins. That's two times as much for every Power League skin, but just keep in mind, it's not actually as bad as that sounds because bling will be much easier to get for most players. I'll explain that later though. Interestingly enough, Dark Bounty Penny is the only star point skin whose cost is not increasing. But in order for you to purchase her, you also have to own Bunny Penny first. Something else that's interesting is Gold Mecha Crow, Night Mecha Crow, Light Mecha Bow, and also Gold Mecha Bow cannot be purchased with star points anymore. You have to first purchase the Mecha Bow or Mecha Crow skin, and then you can purchase them for 49 gems, just like the Mecha Mortar skin color variations. Now, I'm not going to cover every specific change for every star point skin, but what you need to know is that they will cost more star points after the update. So before the update, go to the star shop and buy them with your star points if there's a specific skin that you want to get. Now, I mentioned you'll be getting more bling. The sources of bling are getting reworked and it's quite different from the previous system. Let's start off by talking about Power League. Before the update, you would get a lump sum of star points at the end of the season, depending on how well you did in Power League. What's going to happen now is that you will earn bling as you progress. So let's say I went up to bronze three right now, I would immediately be able to collect those rewards right now. And you can gain more and more bling as you climb up higher and higher, claiming it at every single rank. What's interesting though, is that the end of the season, once it actually resets, and let's say you started in mythic one and you got reset down to like diamond or whatever, that's not the actual number, it might be, but then you would be able to go and collect all of the previous bling resources up until diamond one. And the bling rewards are significantly higher for power league, okay? I'm gonna put up a spreadsheet right there of a before and after if you really care, but I'm gonna cover the really important important numbers. You get five to four times more rewards up through gold two. You get close to three times more rewards from gold three up through diamond two. And the crossing point of before and after is 
about Legendary 3, where players earn about the same amount of rewards before versus after the update. And it gets very, very slightly worse in Masters, but not by much. Now, this means that more players who are in lower leagues will actually get way more bling, bling than before, but the league resets are actually going to be a little bit harsher. Here's that spreadsheet again if you really care, but what this means is that you'll need to play more Power League to reach the same ranks, but I'm hoping that matchmaking will actually be a little bit better. Only time will tell, though. The trophy reset is also getting a lot of changes. It's going to happen every two weeks instead of every two months, but instead of resetting all of your brawlers above 500 trophies, it's only going to reset your top 20. Here's another spreadsheet for those of you guys that really love numbers out there. You can pause it or take a screenshot or whatever. But in order for me to compare the two trophy systems before and after, I converted both systems to bling per month to get an idea of how the systems actually compare. But just keep in mind that the before and the after is actually set at 36 brawlers, which is about where it's equal. It's kind of confusing, and honestly, I've spent way too long actually crunching these numbers. So let me just break this down for who this is good for and who this is bad for. It seems like the balance point is about 36 brawlers above 500 trophies. So in other words, if you have exactly 36 brawlers above 500 trophies, the rewards before this update and after this update, obviously after you convert the star points into bling, they're pretty much exactly the same across all trophy levels. Now, if you have less than 36 brawlers above 500 trophies, the trophy reset rewards are being buffed for you. That means that casual players who don't really care too much about pushing every single brawler every season are actually getting a bigger boost to the trophy reset. It also means that you do not have to push more than 20 brawlers each season, and you can maximize your rewards by just focusing on 20 brawlers so you can really get a lot of bling for fewer brawlers that are actually enjoyable for you to play are actually competitive for the season. Now, if you have more than 36 brawlers above 500 trophies, the trophy reset rewards are being nerfed for you and you will receive less bling from the trophy reset than before this update. Obviously, after you factor in that conversion of star points to bling. The more brawlers you have above 500 trophies, the more rewards are being nerfed, but do keep in mind that you will still be earning more total bling than other players in the game. Also, keep in mind that we're getting a lot more bling from Power League and there's a lot of other sources of bling as well, which we'll cover in a bit. And another thing to keep in mind is that there have actually been some major changes to how many trophies you will lose after each reset. This primarily only affects brawlers over 750 trophies, and a lot of the resets above 1,000 trophies are actually way less harsh. I'll throw the spreadsheet up here so you guys can take another look at it. Basically, what this means is that matchmaking time will become more skill-based over time rather than time-based, and it also means that really skilled players will actually be able to keep brawlers up to 1,500 trophies if they're willing to put in the work. Additionally, they're going to make the blacklist duration way shorter. What this means is that if you face a player above 800 trophies, you will then be able to face them sooner than you would have before the update. But previously, it was like a full day. You couldn't face them again. Now it's a lot shorter. I can't give you the exact number. Supercell is keeping that information private to prevent people from actually exploiting it, but it's a lot shorter. Let's talk about other sources of bling. You're also going to get more bling from the Brawl Pass at tier 1 and tier 10. This is replacing the pin pack since they're no longer in the game. By the way, this is 100 extra bling than it would have cost to buy the pins that you would have gotten from the pin pack. And you know the rank up rewards that you get for like reaching rank 20, 25, 30, and 35? None of those rewards are actually changing. You're just going to get one bling instead of 10 star points. The conversion's very equal. Now, one thing to keep in mind, bling does have a cap of 7,000 total bling. If you reach that cap at any time, you will not be able to earn more bling until you spend it. So let's say you have more than 70,000 star points when the update actually lands. All of it will be converted into bling. You don't have to worry about losing it. If you have a 100,000 star points, you'll get 10,000 bling, even though the cap is only at 7,000. So it will be possible to have more than 7,000 bling right when the update lands, but you will not be able to earn any more bling unless you spend enough to get it below 7,000 bling. I know there's a lot to digest here, and I know that you guys really want to know what my opinions are on it because I've seen the numbers a lot more than you guys have. Typically, I wait for my 100% honest update review, but I'll give the short version right now. Overall, honestly, I'm actually pretty happy with the changes. I'm a little concerned about the trophy season reset, which I'll explain in my 100% honest update review video later. But as for the bling amounts, I think they're fantastic because the most active players will get more bling than everyone else and everyone else will get way more bling than they did before the update or star points converted into bling. So honestly, I think even the players that are getting less bling from the trophy reset will actually be pretty happy with the bling because you can buy way more with bling than you could with star points. You can either go to the shop and check out the catalog where you can actually like look through all these things. Like let's say you just want to like 
buy a skin, you can just pull it up right there. You don't have to wait for it to pull up from the shop or anything like that. You can just buy it with bling. If you have a brawler that you want to get a specific skin for, you can even just go to that brawler and click this icon at the very top. And here you have all their skins and stuff like that that you can buy with gems or bling or whatever. You can also buy all of the sprays. Each of the sprays are going to cost 1,000 bling or 29 gems, except for some specific brawler pins, which are 750 or 19 gems. You can also choose which pins that you want to buy. You can buy common pins for 375 bling or 9 gems. You can get rare pins for 750 bling bling or 19 gems, and you can get epic pins for 1,500 bling or 39 gems. You can also go and buy profile icons for 750 bling or 19 gems, and you can actually buy most skins in the game with bling. All you got to do is go to the catalog. Rare skins will cost 29 gems or 1,000 bling. Super rare skins will cost 2,750 bling or 79 gems. You'll want to keep in mind that all skins that cost 49 gems before this update are actually going up into the super rare tier, and they will cost 79 gems. Before the update lands, all of the 49 gems gem skins will actually be available in the shop for 49 gems. So if you do want to buy any of these 49 gem skins before the update at a discount, then do so. And you can actually get a little bit of a bonus, okay? You just go all the way over here. You enter code right here, K-A-I-R-O-S, and that's code Kairos and Brawl Star Shop to support not only myself, and the bonus is that you get to support the rest of the Kairos team as well. Now, the epic skins will cost 149 gems or 5,000 bling. Then you have mythic skins, which we'll cover, and uh, you cannot buy these with bling. They will cost 199 gems. And legendary skins, which also cannot be purchased with bling, they cost 299 gems. We're getting a new event modifier called Top Dog. In this mode, you will no longer heal naturally, and you must heal with the power of hot dogs. Each hot dog you eat will heal you 3,000 HP, but there are two ways to get hot dogs. You can kill someone and they will drop a hot dog, or you can wait for a hot dog to spawn, similar to how energy drinks spawn. Healing abilities like Poco Super do work in this game mode. So like Barley's Medical U Star Power works, so does Griff's Business Resilience Star Power, so they might be pretty good options in the mode. Now, Top Dog will be a trophy event in Showdown. There's a chance they might do like a special event. I don't actually know, but you will be able to add the modifier to friendly rooms in other game modes too. So you could do things like Top Dog Knockout or Top Dog Brawl Ball or stuff like that. <laughs> okay, this next change, I've been begging for it. Ever since the Brawl Box rework, this change has been on my mind and it's happening. The price for Chromatic Brawlers is decreasing. During a Chromatic's first season, the cost is decreasing from 4.5 thousand Chroma Credits, which is way too much, down to 2.5 thousand. It's still too expensive to justify buying in like most situations, but it is way more reasonable. What's way more important that though, is that the price reduction in Chromatics that are in their second season is being reduced reduce from 1,500 chroma credits down to 1,250 chroma credits. This means that free to play players who save their gems to buy every brawl pass will now be able to earn enough chroma credits so that they have every chromatic brawler in the game every other season. They will have to be very active. They'll have to log in every single day, check the daily freebie rewards, or even push some special events, or complete the mastery ranks for Chromatic Brawlers so they can earn that remaining Chroma credits for them to unlock it, but it is going to be possible. I really love it when Supercell listens to our feedback. It took them four months. It's longer than I wanted it to, but they did it. We're now getting a new end battle screen, okay? You can see cool stats like damage, kills, deaths. You can even give kudos to one player. You can only do one, but rumor has it, the the more kudos that one player gets, the bigger their thumbs up gets, which is kind of cool. Now, there's no way to see how many total kudos you've gotten, and there's no, no reason to have kudos to my knowledge, but it's still a pretty cool concept. Now, this won't affect most of you guys watching this, but Brawl Stars is buffing the progression for new players. They got a lot of feedback that unlocking Brawlers was too slow for the first 10,000 trophies, which honestly makes sense because before they removed boxes from the game, it was actually way easier to get new Brawlers for new players. So they're adding 1,920 credits spread throughout the first 10,000 trophies, and they're adding 1,000 Chroma credits to those first rewards as well. They're also giving new players discounts on their first Epic Brawler and their first Mythic Brawler. Like I said, these changes aren't going to affect most of you guys watching, and I can almost guarantee you that people are going to watch this and expect that current players also get these resources. I don't think that's going to happen, and honestly, I don't think that they, they need to. I think it's just fine the way that it is. Like I said, when Brawl Boxes were in the game, we got new Brawlers way faster than new players currently do, so I think it's fair. Now let's talk about balance changes in and then we'll cover the new skins coming into the game. The Poison Smoke in Showdown is getting a nerf. It used to deal 1,000 damage per second for every brawler, which honestly was a little harsh, especially for the squishy brawlers that didn't have a lot of HP. It's now going to deal damage based off of the brawler's max HP. The exact percentage is 20%, so tanky brawlers will take a lot more damage, and squishy brawlers will take a lot less. This is ultimately going to make gas a lot less punishing in Showdown, Knockout, and Duels. You might even be able to use it to like 
go into the gas just very briefly. Just remember that after five seconds of being in the gas, the damage increases 5% every time after that. A secondary win condition is being added into Bounty. If a team reaches 20 stars, the match will end early and they will be declared the winner. Also, names will be visible for enemies clear up into 1,000 trophies instead of just 600, and names will be visible in Power League all the way up until Masters. Edgar is getting a 7% buff to his total health, which is increasing it from 4,200 to 4,500. This is a pretty decent health buff, and he'll be able to survive a little bit more burst damage from enemies, which could make a big difference from him. I'm not convinced that he's going to be super competitive, but we'll see. Shelly is also getting a buff. Her movement speed is increasing from normal all the way up to very fast. This is going to make her regular movement speed at just as fast as crows, maxes, mortises. It's the fastest movement speed in the game, except for when brawlers are getting boosted by like maxes super and stuff like that. But honestly, I don't want to get too crazy with this, but I think she might actually be playable and competitive. She's probably not going to be this like super strong, but she's already one of the best close range brawlers in the game. And now she'll be able to dodge more shots and actually get close to enemies before dying a little bit easier. So she's something to consider. Now, RT is getting two nerfs. His health is getting nerfed by 5% which will bring it down from 6,150 down to 5,850. And he's also getting a nerf to his attack cooldown time in his split form. What that means is that when he is in his split form, after he attacks, the time it takes before he can release his next attack is now being doubled from, you know, 250 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. It's not very much, but honestly, I think both of these nerfs were really pretty much needed. And uh, he's going to be a little bit easier to kill now. I don't know if he's going to be super strong now, but I certainly think he'll still be viable. Now, Meg, is getting an insane rework. She will now start the match in her mecha and will respawn in her mecha as well. They're also removing the health decay from Meg's mecha, so it can just be healed up like any regular brawler. If you don't attack it over a period of time, it'll start naturally healing up. Also, if she gets healed by other brawlers like, you know, Poco or Byron, the amount of healing that she gets will no longer be reduced. So yeah, now Meg's the strongest brawler in the game. Okay, she's also getting some nerfs. Her mecha is receiving a 20% health nerf, bringing it down to 6,000 HP. Her mecha's attack is receiving a 16% damage nerf, which is very significant. And her mecha's super is receiving a 30% damage nerf, which means it will no longer be able to one-shot any brawler in the game. Additionally, her super is no longer going to be able to automatically charge, and it will require you to deal damage in order for her to charge it up. Now, the team didn't want to shake up the meta too much because they're in the middle of, like, some competitive events right now, but they did mention that they are considering doing a bigger balance changes update later in this update. So now let's cover all of the skin costs and animations. First up, we got Jungle Queen Maisie, which I actually can't show, but this is going to be the tier 70 reward of the Brawl Pass. I also cannot show you Tech Maisie. That'll be for a future episode, but it'll cost 29 gems and Shark Tank Hank will also cost 29 gems. I can show you Bananas Colt, okay? He is an epic skin and will cost 149 gems or 5,000 bling. He's got white monkey hair, a monkey tail. He's wearing some sort of a headset and his pistols are bananas. And what do his banana pistols shoot more bananas. And the biggest difference between his attack and his super is that the bananas from his super are peeled halfway while the bananas from his regular attack are not. When he wins, he stands on one hand, jumps right into a triple backflip and sticks the landing. And when he loses, he drops his banana pistols and one of them actually fires and hits his butt, which makes him sit and cry. Next, we have Leopard and Panther Max. Leopard Max is a super rare skin and will cost 79 gems or 2,750 bling. Once you get Leopard Max, you can then spend an additional 29 gems or 1,000 bling to get Panther Max, but you can't buy Panther Max by itself. The only difference between the two of them is their color. Now for her attack, she fires little leopard claws for each projectile. And for a super, the wind picks up some leaves around her and her first few steps leave some paw prints on the ground. When she wins, she does some cool flips to show her cat-like agility and then winks. And when she loses, she runs out of energy drink and slashes the bottle, which then lands on her head. Next, we have Crocodile Buster, and that is an epic skin. It will cost 149 gems or 5,000 bling. He's all dressed up like he's going hunting hunting for crocodiles, and even has a robot crocodile instead of his projector. For his attack, his crocodile fires three rope traps, and for his super, he makes a giant net made out of ropes and sticks. When a projectile hits the net, it reflects it back as a hunting knife, which is a cool touch. When he wins, his crocodile leaps out of the water and into his arms, where he lovingly tosses it into the air. And when he loses, the crocodile jumps out of his water, bites at his foot, and then swims away. Next, we have Jaguar Spirit Meg, and this is the Power League skin, so you will need to win 
60 Power League matches, and then you can purchase it in the shop for 5,000 bling. Meg is wearing a tribal jungle outfit, and her mecha looks like it was cut out of a giant stone totem pole. For her mecha's attack, it fires a barrage of its fists, and then for the, her mecha's super, she just swings its arm really hard, and it leaves this cool design on the ground. While Meg is out of her mecha, she fires two little stone tablets for her main attack, and for her super, her mecha's face slams into the ground before she hops in. When she wins, she does some sort of happy rain dance, and when she loses, she does this weird dodging thing. I think it isn't actually finished yet, so it might be a work in progress. Next up, we have the Legends of Olympus skins. All three of them are mythic skins and will cost 199 gems and cannot be purchased with bling. Cerberus Tick is based off of Cerberus in Greek mythology, which actually prevents the spirits from leaving the underworld. And he has a flaming dog head, and his two hands are also flaming dog heads. For his attack, he drops three flaming dog heads, and for a super, his head becomes another flaming dog head. <laughs> when he wins, one of the heads licks the middle head awake, and then the third one slams the ground to get Tick on his feet, and when he loses, a stray mine rolls right in front of him and explodes, leaving Tick very dizzy. Next, we have Ares Nani, who is based off of the Greek god Ares, the god of war. This is also a mythic skin and will cost 199 gems. Nani's eye is glowing red, and she's dressed in this awesome gladiator outfit. Even Peep has a gladiator helmet on. Now, for her attack, she fires three weapons, and sometimes they're swords, sometimes they're axes, sometimes it's a mixture of both. For her super, Peep actually bounces around, alternating between swinging a sword and an axe, which each has a little bounce. It's actually a little bit weird to look at, and it looks confusing, but you actually get the hang of it when you play with it. Tons of weapons stick on the ground whenever Peep explodes, which just looks cool. Weapons raining from the sky, are you kidding me? And when she wins, she lands on the ground and then sends these glowing lights front to the sky, which then comes back down as swords. And when she loses, her eyes turn into an X as she punches her shield and then tosses it over her head. Next, we have Zeus Brock, based off of the Greek god of lightning, Zeus. He will also cost 199 gems. For the most part, he also has some sweet looking lightning shades and has a cloud that follows him around instead of a rocket launcher. For his main attack, he shoots lightning bolts that cause lightning to strike down wherever they blow up, which is so awesome. And it even looks cooler with his super because there's basically a giant thunderstorm happening down. When he wins, he floats down on his cloud and dismounts, then holds his finger to summon the cloud back into his hands. And when he loses, his cloud tries to comfort him, but when he pushes it away, it bonks him on the head and then rains down him. Next, we have Harajuku M's, which is in celebration of the Golden Week. She is going to cost 79 gems or 2,750 bling, which is a pretty great deal in my opinion. Her outfit is based off of the very unique Harajuku style, which is a shopping district in Japan. And for her super, her spray turns into a cloud that are shaped like bear faces or pandas or something like that. Now for her super, it looks similar to her original, but it actually is a little bit more flashy, has a cool striped border around it. And when she wins, she does this dance, which I can only assume is heavily based off of the dance from Wednesday, the really hit Adam's Family TV series. It's actually pretty good. You should watch it if you haven't. When she loses, she drops her phone while taking selfies, and when she realizes it's broken, she starts to cry. Next, we have a bunch of 29 gem skins that will all cost 1,000 bling. Starting with Goblin Carl, and none of these rare skins have any animation or attack changes, which is fair because they're actually really inexpensive. Leon the Stray has him dressed as a cat instead of a chameleon, which is actually really cool. Kaiju Buzz has the same colors as Kaiju from the old Super City Rampage game mode. Then we have Bubblegum BB. It's super pink, super bubblegummy. It's really fun. She's got a little bit of blue. It's kind of like cotton candy, honestly. She now swings a lollipop. Then we have Blackbird Edgar. He's mostly blue now, and he has this mysterious mask. I don't know if he's a vigilante or a, an evil villain, but you can decide for yourself. If you do get any of the skins in the game, I would really appreciate you guys using code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop before you buy any gems at all. And that is everything I'm able to show you in this video, so make sure you subscribe for the Hank and the Maisie Olympics, and uh, check out my other content in the meantime. For now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by. We will see you in the next sneak peek.